Today we'll recap a 2013 American slasher film named Hatchet 3. It is the sequel to Hatchet and Hatchet 2, and the third installment in the Hatchet film series. Hatchet and Hatchet 2 recaps links are available in the description. You can check those first to understand this part better. Kindly remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. The film picks up immediately after the end of the last film, with Marybeth Dunstan blowing off the head of Victor Crowley with a shotgun. She walks away and comes across the bodies of Vernon and John, where she hears a somehow still alive Victor Crowley in the woods. She then starts up the chainsaw and prepares for a fight, but is grabbed by Victor Crowley, whose head is bloody but reattached. She puts her arm through his bloody face, and he falls backward onto the chainsaw, cutting him down the middle and in half. She then walks into the Jefferson Parish Police Department, immediately having guns drawn on her. Here they see Victor's scalp in her hand and she says that all are killed in Honey Island Swamp. She tells Sheriff Fowler that Swamp has 20-30 bodies and that her entire family has also been killed by Victor Crowley. But Fowler does not believe Crowley's story and suspects her of murders. Then Hamilton from Island Swamp tells him that they have found four bodies so far that have been badly killed. The Sheriff then heads out to the swamp with the paramedics and fire department leaving Deputy Winslow in charge of the station until he gets back. Amanda Fowler, the sheriff's ex-wife, journalist, an expert on the legend of Victor Crowley, comes into the station to interview Marybeth about what happened. Here the paramedic team also reaches the island, which Jim Doffy is leading. Here he meets Hamilton, the in charge of the police team, who tells him that they have a girl in custody. Now Doffy does not believe that a girl can do all this. After this, he asks his team to collect the bodies, and here we see a team member getting the head of Trent. On the other hand, Amanda meets Marybeth and tells her that she wants to help her. She wants her to help her to prove that the ghost of Victor Crowley exists. She will otherwise be tried and executed for what happened at Honey Island Swamp. At Honey Island Swamp, Andrew brings a giant body in a bag and tells Randy to take a look at it right away. They were thinking that it might be Victor Crowley. Now both of them bring that body inside the boat where they argue about something and Andrew leaves from there. Here after retelling the events of the previous two films to Amanda, Amanda tells her that Victor Crowley is a repeater, set to relive the night he died. He can't be killed as he is already dead, but Marybeth tells her that she is pretty sure he is dead as she killed him last night. Now the night falls and Randy is alone on the boat when we see some movement in the bag behind him. And when he got up to get the goggles, Victor's body had disappeared from behind him. Just then a sound comes and Victor blows Randy's head off with a defibrillator. Now hearing the noise, Hamilton comes there, and only then does Victor starts moving towards him. But he shoots and knocks him down. Then he gets up again and starts moving toward him with a hatchet, while Hamilton starts asking for help on the radio. But Victor kills him by hacking his head in half. Now at the police station, Ember tells Marybeth that her father was the one that came up with the idea to start the fire. Since he is dead and she is Samson's bloodline, only she can put an end to Victor Crowley. Amanda convinces Deputy Winslow to let Marybeth out of jail and help her save everyone at Honey Island Swamp. During this, we see that Victor attacks many other officers and kills them. Fowler has also reached Swamp and is briefing his team when a SWAT team reaches there led by Tyler Hawes and consists of five others, four armed men and a one armed woman named Dory. Hawes takes over the operation from Fowler and leads them to the Crowley house. Now since Doherty was new here, she didn't know anything about Victor Crowley. Schneiderman starts telling her his story but then another officer interrupts him. Here Amanda asks Winslow to drive to Ozona, to which Marybeth asks what is in the Ozona? Amanda tells them that she is going to meet Abbott McMullen. Winslow stops the car on hearing his name, and here Amanda tells them that Abbott McMullen is the only living relative of Thomas Crowley who possesses his ashes. She thinks that the only way to give Victor Crowley peace is to give him what he wants. She tells Marybeth that only the person responsible for Victor Crowley's death can deliver what he is looking for. Now Marybeth tells her that her dad is dead, to which Amanda says but she is alive. Back at the swamp, seeing the situation there, Fowler says that he is calling the military and they are leaving. But then Andrew comes there and he also tells them to leave from there. He tells that Victor Crowley killed everyone and he survived by hiding under someone's dead body. Now Fowler starts calling the military, but Hawes snatches the radio from him and cancels his request, and says that the situation is under control. Hawes then asks Andrew where is Victor, 
on which he says that the last time he heard the screaming from there, and suddenly the bushes move there. Now all the officers get alert and start firing, and then Haas proceeds to check where he finds a dead animal. But then they hear Victor Crawley, hearing which they start moving towards his house. Now as soon as they reach there, Victor kills one officer and drags him inside, and starts dragging another officer. Fowler tries to save her but Victor drags her in as well. After this, he throws the dead bodies out of the shed, and the team starts firing at the shed. But then Victor comes from behind and attacks another officer. The SWAT team gangs up on him but he throws them all away, rips that officer into two pieces, and attacks all the other officers and kills them one by one. Now the remaining officers start firing at him but nothing happens to him, after which Haas tries tackling him but is in turn pinned against the shed. Victor then puts his hand in his stomach and then rips out his skull and spine. He then starts attacking Rick, and Schneiderman takes the opportunity to fire a rocket launcher at him, but misses and hits Rick instead, killing him. The resulting explosion blows up the Crowley house, destroying it and covering Victor in the rubble. When Schneiderman begins to celebrate, Victor appears from the wreckage and throws a piece of rubble into Schneiderman's back. He then proceeds to kill Schneiderman by ripping his arms off and drowning him in a puddle. On the other hand, Amanda and Winslow arrive at him at Mac Mullen's house, where Amanda tells him that they want to borrow Thomas Crowley's ashes, and then they will return it. They say that this is part of the police investigation and they want these ashes as evidence. When he declines to give up the ashes, Amanda holds him at gunpoint and leaves with the ashes. Back at Honey Island Swamp, Victor corners Sheriff, Andrew, and Doherty in the water ambulance with Randy's corpse. They barricade themselves in and the sheriff calls for the National Guard on the ambulance's radio, telling them they are being attacked by crazed gunmen and asking for immediate help. The National Guard tells them they are sending the choppers. After a while, everything calms down and just as they settle down and think everything is safe, Victor begins to saw his way through the boat wall with the gas-powered belt sander. The sheriff tells them not to move. If they try to leave, they will get killed, while Andrew thinks they should leave while he is busy cutting through the wall. Fowler asks the National Guards for EDA, to which they inform him that the choppers will arrive in 10 minutes. Just then, Victor catches Andrew, but Doherty manages to free Andrew by attacking him with a hammer. Amanda, Deputy Winslow and Maribeth arrive at the swamp outside the burned down Crowley house. Amanda calls out for Victor, telling him they have his father. Now hearing her voice, Victor leaves from there and they think that maybe help has come. But then Fowler realizes it's Amanda's voice and as he looks outside, Victor grabs him and beheads him with the belt sander. His arms then move around in the air before collapsing. Andrew and Doherty are trapped in the boat with Victor on the other side of the broken door. Doherty attempts to slowly get the sheriff's gun, but Victor grabs and pulls her through the hole in the door, which disembowels her. Andrew smartly remains in the boat, keeping himself out of sight of Victor. Victor then goes back to his destroyed home and finds Amanda and Deputy Winslow there, but refrains from attacking when he sees the ashes. Marybeth offers Victor his father's ashes and apologizes for what her father did to him. Victor proclaims Daddy upon seeing the ashes. When he approaches to take the ashes, Deputy Winslow mistakes it for Victor going to attack Marybeth, and so shoots him down. He then shoots a few more shots and says that he is dead, but Victor rises back up and rips apart Winslow's chest when his back is turned. Amanda grabs the urn and rolls it back to Marybeth as she attempts to grab Winslow's gun, but Victor grabs Amanda. She tells him that she came to save him, but he rips her head off her body. Victor then knocks Marybeth over with Amanda's head and impales her on a tree branch, seriously injuring her. Just when Victor picks up a machete to finish Marybeth off, she smashes the urn over Victor's head, spreading his father's ashes all over him. It causes him to collapse and he starts melting. Marybeth then with the last bit of her strength, grabs one of the SWAT team's guns and blows his remains away, finally killing Victor Crowley once and for all. The National Guard then arrives and Andrew, now free of danger, emerges from the boat and signals the helicopters. Just as the screen cuts to black, one final shot of Maribeth gasping for air is shown. Thanks for watching.